Hi everyone, it's Nicole. Welcome back to my channel and another paper crafting video tutorial. Today we're going to be creating this rainbow of colored pencils card featuring brand new products from Paper Tray Inc.'s March 2024 release. Now I did die cut my pencil multiple times from some smooth white cardstock and I'm going to use one of those negative spaces. This design is based on a quilt and a pillow as you're seeing here on the screen that I've created that is from one of my favorite quilt designers and I have made multiple of the quilt and I've made multiple of the pillow that matches and when I saw this just a note stamp set I knew that I wanted to create a card that was similar or just notes I guess is what this is called. I knew I wanted to create a card design similar to that with these pencils. So instead of making this more of that traditional yellow number two pencil, I'm going to think of it more as colored pencils. I am using the color latte for the pencil itself and then the color of the tip and the color of the body of the pencil will be a color of Simon Says Stamp Positively Saturated Ink. Now the beautiful thing about this is that there are lots of colors and trios of colors in a color family from Simon Says Stamp and that's great because I believe I have oh my goodness, 10, 20, 22 pencils. And I needed that many color, at least that many color combinations for my card. I wanted every single one of them to be a different color. Now you could achieve this with lots of different inks that you have in your stash. That's just what I chose to use today. I do have all of the inks I'm using listed and linked down below the video here on YouTube. By using the negative space, I don't have to reposition my pencil every time. And you'll notice that I simply pull the pencil out and I clean my stamp and I ink it with the new color. I did opt to do the two smaller pieces of the pencil with acrylic blocks as opposed to my Misty because that just was a lot easier than having to line those up every time. You could definitely uh, do them assembly line style in your Misty if you want to. This is a lot of stamping. I know I saw several uh, comments about how much stamping this might have been over on Instagram when I posted this as part of the Paper Tray Ink blog hop. And while it is a lot of stamping, this card really didn't take any longer than any other card to make. And I think it's because I broke it down into steps like this. Now, the other thing I want you to remember, you're going to see that my pencils absolutely don't have the eraser. They don't have that end part of the pencil, um, the metal piece around and the eraser, which is super cute. But in the case of this card, it wouldn't be seen and I'd be cutting it off anyway. So I chose not to even stamp it. And you wouldn't know that looking at the card. The one thing I did do is I picked two colors from each color family or trio. Simon Says Stamp does their inks in tri ink trios. Um, you can buy them individually, but they release them in a trio of colors. And I picked two colors. It wasn't always like the light and the medium or the medium and the dark or the light and the dark or whatever the combination. It was really kind of whatever I thought was going to show up the best. So again, I have listed the exact colors down below in pairs. Um, they'll be together in the, in the uh, supply list so that you know which ones I used together exactly. But there is one layering piece and it's those two long skinny lines that go on the pencil. And that's the reason I was mentioning using the multiple colors of ink is once I have the base color and off camera, I know you can't see it while I'm stamping, up above me, I have laid out the pencils in a row so that I can, and then I have the inks lined up in a row so that when I go back and add the layering color, it's very easy for me to pick it up. I don't need to keep them in perfect color order um, necessarily for how I'm going to put them on the card, but I need do need to keep them in color order for adding 
the layering just to make it easy because some of the colors might uh, start looking somewhat similar or you I might not remember exactly what was what so I did make sure that I had space to lay them out and this was really it was just a very satisfying ca card to make um, I talk about this sometimes in my videos where I think of a card design and it's awesome when it turns out exactly as you would hope it would. It does not always happen that way, but this was one that actually worked out really, really well. Um, I will have to make a few design decisions as far as finishing of the card, but as for the pencils and the heart shape of the pencils uh, themselves, that all came together just so easily and so wonderfully. I talk about this in my monthly Paper Tray Ink videos, how much I absolutely adore the stamp layering with inks. Um, this is always great for my non-colors or if you just don't feel like coloring and some days you just might not feel like coloring. At least I don't always uh, feel like coloring and yet I still want to have lots of color on my card. Layering stamps or layering stencils are where it's at. So this was a very satisfying project as far as that goes. I would even say that even though this card has so many different stamped elements with all of the different pencils and all of the different colors. This took less time to make than a card where I have to color images. Sometimes those images, depending on how many images it is and how um, intensive the card is, can take a lot longer. So I love that too. I love having a card that looks like it took me all day that only took me an hour and a half. Um, this did only take an hour and a half to make. It is fairly simple as it's a lot of repetition. There is not a lot of different kind of, you know, quote unquote moving parts. There's no moving parts, but you know what I mean. Um, it is just basic paper and stamping. We will do a little stenciling for the background and then add in some extra detail to dress it up and to jazz it up and finish it up as a card. So we have just a couple more pencils left for the first part of the stamping to make. I did speed up the stamping, but I left it in because I think it's important to kind of watch the process and see how easy these did come together for me. Um, and so hopefully it inspires you. If you wanna create something similar, even if you just want to do a little bit simpler rainbow of pencils across your card. Maybe you want to stamp the entire pencil and you don't want to have, you know, um, this, I mean, I, are, I know 22 pencils is a crazy amount of pencils, but let's just say we want to do a nice basic pastel rainbow, a primary rainbow or a jewel tone rainbow, whatever of pencils, or maybe you just want to create a bunch of basic yellow number two pencils across your card. I would do this same process. Obviously I would add the metal and the eraser to each, and I will be doing that because uh, soon this is just one of those stamp sets and die sets that I can see myself reaching for again and again. It is all the things I love. You can make washi tape. You can make things that look like binder clips. I love that you can make all of the things that look uh, paper clips. You can make things that look like paper clips, stamped or die cut. Um, it's just kind of all of the little office-y things that I personally love. I know a lot of you do too. And it is really fun. Even a little torn piece of paper. It is a fantastic, a fantastic stamp set, you guys. So definitely check that out um, if you haven't already. And I do love the bookmark stamp set and dies that came out with this release. It has a little bit chunkier pencil for a different look. Okay, we have just a couple more. I Oh, yeah, just a couple more pencils. This is the even quicker part. You can see I'm stamping and wiping it down. Stamping, wiping, stamping, wiping. The layering was a lot quicker. The first base, we of course had the pencil, the, the three pieces, and this is just one. 
so definitely goes a little faster. I do think if I was adding the metal and the eraser, I would stamp those with acrylic blocks like I did for the smaller pieces on the pencils just to save a little bit of time. I think it's sometimes those things are just easier to stamp with an acrylic block. Now I have a four and a quarter by five and a half inch panel of smooth white cardstock, and we are going to take some new stencils. These are called the Just Notes Stencil Collection from the release, and we are going to stencil them with some surf ink from Simon Says Stamp. Now I was gonna use my blending brush, but I did switch to a picket fence pouncer for this. A lot of times with a stripey stencil, whether it's a diagonal stripe stencil or, or like we're doing here uh, with the vertical and the horizontal, I think the pouncer works a little better because I'm not worried about rubbing the stencil and having it shift on me. Okay, I didn't like the surf so much, so we're gonna go for ocean ink instead. I think that's gonna show up better, and then we're gonna go back to surf to blend over the whole thing when we're done. Kind of give, we're making a grid. I love that you can make a lot of different kinds of paper here. So like where I'm gonna be creating more of this graph or grid paper or whatever, you could also have horizontal lines going either landscape or vertical. You can have wider. I'm not using the wider ones. I'm using the more narrow ones. You'll also notice I pounced my color more in the center so that it faded out to the outside because this is a card. Um, and I just wanted mine to have a little bit more imperfection. Now this stencil set actually is part of the Pro Stampers box for March, which comes with a floral stamp set, dies, and stencil. And I wanted to kind of grunge up my background a little bit with some of the stencils from this. I'm also using the Ocean Oak, Ocean Ink for this as well. And I did that in a couple places, not down along the bottom edge. That won't even be seen because that's where I'm going to line up all of my pencils. I'm going to go over the whole thing now with the Surf Ink as I mentioned. You may notice in the finished card design that the top edge of my cardstock has a torn looking edge. Now if I had been thinking, I would have done this before, but I will talk to you after we have all the pencils in place about how I adjusted this and made it work without ruining my card because I didn't do anything different. It is this exact background. The next step I would take for creating this, if you know, just for you guys' knowledge and for on the video here, is I would line them up in the rainbow order of how you want to place them. And I showed you that bit that photo at the beginning of the that photo at the beginning of the video. To place them in a heart shape, the center pencil in the back needs to be low at the lower point, and then it kind of goes up and then it starts coming back down. Um, so you'll notice that I'm going to shift them. So I placed the center pencil. I also found it much easier to work uh, from the center out, and I'm going to go on each side. Try just visually matching. You could use a T-square ruler if you wanted to at this point as well to match up your pencils to get them where you want them to go. Now, I know that here in a minute, some of that white at the bottom where you would have the metal and the eraser will show, but remember we're layering another pencil right on top of these. So that's why I opted not to stamp that. It will get covered up. So you'll notice from that center point, it's starting to go up. Um, the next pencil we add on either side will be the highest point, and then it's going to start coming back around. I could have probably, probably put it up a little bit higher, but I really wanted it to be featured more along the bottom edge of this. So let's go ahead and I'm using long, skinny foam adhesive we're coming back down, you can see, on each side. And by placing them in rainbow order on my work table for the back row and the front row, it made it very easy to line these up. Okay, I'm gonna flip the panel over and trim off anything here. 
that's hanging off the edge just to clean that up a little bit and make it easier for adding the next row. Now the next row is going to be exactly the same except this one is going to start at the low point and it's going to slightly go up and it's going to create this visual heart effect. So again, I started in the middle and I'm just gonna work my way out on each side, just gradually working my way up. Having them in the rainbow order in like the two, I start in the middle and then I just start working on the two sides. Also just made it super easy to know which one was next. You can see that heart start taking shape And then we're going to put these last couple of pencils and then we're going to flip it over and trim away all of the excess. And that is the focal point of our card and at this point the focal point is finished. It's just the finishing details. So I'm going to place my background in my Misty and using a greeting from the stamp set, I wanna figure out where I want it to go. Now, originally I thought up at the top, I wanna use one of the scripty greetings from the Just Notes uh, stamp set, but I also wanna use one of the smaller phrases that's just a personal design that I love. Um, I love the combination of the two together on my cards, but I'll use one of the little banner dies from the coordinating die set for that. Well, I couldn't, I didn't like how it looked up high. I like it right here. And even though it's going to go over the pencils, I think it's going to look good. So um, I, I was having such a hard time figuring out um, where I want this to go, but I think it's going to look good. I'm gonna use Versafine Onyx Black Ink. It is my go-to for a really crisp black greeting, and I like it. I, it's very legible, it's easy to read. And then for the rest of my greeting, I'm going to stamp the phrase, you're the best, on black cardstock with clear embossing ink and heat emboss with white embossing powder before die cutting with a little banner die, again, from that coordinating die set. So we're gonna grab that now. I've also die cut a paper clip. I know it looks like a real paper clip, but that is actually a, a silver matte cardstock paper clip die cut with the Just Notes dies. That's what I'm talking about, is that you don't even have to add actual metal to your card. You can create paper clips out of any color you want, and I just love it, because laying here on my work surface, it looks like an actual paper clip. And I don't know why that thrills me so much, but it does. Now I just die cut what looks like a little notebook paper from the Love to Layer notebook die. I love notebook dies too. Let's just face it, office supplies of all kind have been my favorite since I was a little kid. So I loved this. It Everything about this release is just amazing. So I'm gonna cut this torn edge and we're actually gonna die cut that from the top of our panel. Now I wanna tape it in place with a little repositionable tape because I do not want this to shift and ruin everything I've just done. I'm only gonna roll it part of the way through my die cutting machine. I didn't move my die cut machine over, it was heavy. So I only rolled it far enough that it cut and then I'm just snipping where it didn't quite go all the way to the edge. And then I can layer that notebook edge underneath the top of my panel. And I'm using the grid on my Glassboard Studio mat. And I do have a link for that down in the description of the video. If you like a glass mat, I love them. Love the this glass mat. It is magnetic. And I have a 20% discount code for you guys, um, which I'm going to pop up right here. I am going to glue my paper clip in place because it is paper, not metal. And then I'm going to go ahead and layer that notebook edge right underneath the top edge, just so that it fits within the four and a quarter by five and a half inch panel using those grid lines on my Glassboard Studio mat so that I make sure that it fits. And I love that. So it looks like a torn edge and then the notebook edge and that I've kind of paper clipped it all together. 
I think this is looking fantastic. At this point, I only need a couple of things to finish it off. Obviously, the little banner that I was talking about earlier, um, I want to stamp and die cut, and then some little hearts are always the perfect finishing touch. I glued my greeting in place with liquid adhesive. We already have two layers of foam, so I didn't want another layer. And then using my glue press, I am going to simply glue a trio of hearts. Um, I think one up high, kind of utilizing that stenciled design, um, and a couple down closer to the greeting. You could even add some glossy accents or something to that if you wanted to. I've got a white top fold card base here that I will use my Simon Says Stamp Tape Runner to attach my panel right to that card base. And that is it guys. Thank you guys so much for joining me today for this colored pencil card featuring Paper Tray Ink March 2024 release products. The supplies I used are listed and linked below the video here on YouTube. Thank you so much for joining me today for another paper crafting tutorial. I love being able to share with this incredible community of crafters. I want to give a huge shout out and special thank you to my amazing Patreon members. If you're interested in joining Patreon, please click the link in the description underneath the video here on YouTube. Patreon is a private community where you can support more of what I do. There is exclusive content, information, and behind the scenes content. Top tier members will receive a handmade birthday card during your birthday month, access to DStash, and monthly exclusive lives, plus so much more. We would love to have you join our growing community. If you enjoyed this video, please subscribe to my channel, click the like button, and don't forget to hit the notification bell to always be notified when I have a new paper crafting video or I go live. Thank you so much for joining and we'll see you next time.